Hello, everybody. Welcome to PSR Podcast, Season 3, Episode 9, with all of this past month's uh, updates and new things in Pokemon speedrunning. My name's Iron. I'm one of your hosts for the show today. Uh, with me are my co-hosts. We have Etiquette. Hello. Jordan97. Hello. And Tucker. Hello. And we have... Uh, two guests technically this month one of them uh, will be hearing from him in a pre-recorded segment during our intermission uh, that's Goagoga. we also have with us blue magma today hello Welcome. everybody thank you yeah so as you can see um we're uh, we we have blue mega on today to talk about um this really awesome new category that well technically new for english that was uh, kind of spearheaded by blue as well as a couple of others so if you want to talk about uh, ruby any percent glitched yeah um so yeah like iron was saying uh this is really a brand new category on the leaderboards uh it was available uh it was a it was a category for the japanese version of the game only um originally um and we developed a lot of the route optimizations for japanese um and then kind of in the middle of messing around with that uh i was like We've never really gotten a confirmation that this doesn't work on English. It's kind of always just been assumed based on uh, previous research. And you know, I was like, you know, I'm just going to try it for the heck of it. And I tried it and I was like, oh my God, it works and started freaking out. And here we are. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we've been putting in a lot of work to get an optimized route for the English version. Um, this is pretty much as good as we can get it right now, uh, as far as we know, um, without the discovery of like new glitches and stuff like that. Um, but this, yeah, this route is really cool. Uh, it's very optimized. Um, you get to see some cool glitch stuff happening. Um, in the mailbox, we get that piece of mail with a really long name. And then when we unequip that, that mail it's not really a mail it's actually an item um with a bunch of question marks for the name so some very wacky stuff that happens um but yeah like i said the this route itself is pretty similar to the the japanese route that uh damon did he he has the japanese world record um so these these glitches pretty much work the same on both versions uh there are a lot of version differences though actually that um, change some things uh, later on in the run, uh, but yeah, you can kind of see on the screen if you're if you're watching. Um, but if you're not watching, just to kind of explain what's happening, uh, this glitch lets us duplicate items, uh, pretty much any item we want, as long as we can equip it to a Pokemon. Um, so we equipped a rare candy to this Abra, and then we're just giving it a bunch of Harbor Mails over and over. Uh, as long as it can be any type of mail, but every time you try to equip a mail, the game kind of runs into an error uh, because it's not able to equip another mail. And so it it gives you the item because how the game would normally work when you switch items like this is it would add one item to your bag and then it would remove the item from the Pokemon and then give the new item. But because the game kind of runs into an error in the middle of this uh, process, the game successfully gives you that item back in your bag, but it never actually completes the process of removing it from the Pokemon. So we can just keep giving ourselves rare candies in this case um, every time we give a piece of mail. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. The underlying... <laughs> Uh, mechanics behind this are a little complicated kind of the the tldr or the the short answer that i give is that the game normally only would allow you to equip six pieces of mail at a time because you have six pokemon maximum in your party um and you can't deposit pokemon holding mail either for to kind of avoid equipping more than six uh but this glitch which you might have saw we used a thief in a double battle with abra we used thief on a pokemon that was holding a male and the game doesn't properly handle like unequipping an item uh when you use thief and so 
the game still thinks that we have a male equipped to Marsh Stomp, even though when we thief it, it actually gets taken away from Marsh Stomp. So that lets us equip two males onto the same Pokemon, and then that leaves us with an extra space where we can equip another male, but the game already thinks that all of those six slots are full, and that's where things really just break. Yeah, so this, like, because this is also this is similar to the Japanese version, or at least kind of like the initial setup where you use Thief there as well on that double fight. Yeah, mechanically the glitches actually work um, exactly the same. The, the reason why nobody tried it, and it's very silly, um, is the first time that this glitch was ever discovered uh, was using Trick. And real any any move that kind of swaps items or like takes items would work to activate the glitch. Um, so in Japanese, it was originally found using Trick, but in English, they actually patched the game so that Trick does not work on Pokemon holding mail. It will just not do anything. Um, and so people noticed that and assumed, okay, it just doesn't work. Um, but it does still work with Thief or Covet. Um, Thief is just really easy to get because you can get it right after the first gym. Um, yeah, that so is, yeah, it, yeah, it really all works the same. Yeah, so that is just an interesting oversight. No one, I guess, the longest time <laughs> thought to use it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the like the Japanese version of this glitch was discovered like over a decade ago, probably. Um, it's so, yeah, it's it's kind of strange that we went so long without, um, yeah, without ever testing it on English. Um, and the, the Japanese version, um, Epic Dude Guy, he had the world record for the Japanese version for a long time. Um, and he used the, the Thief setup like we do here. Um, and he was like, oh yeah, it works on Japanese. And even still, <laughs> nobody ever thought to try it on English um, until I just got bored one day and messed around with it. <laughs> um, and, okay, so the second aspect of this glitch, which is honestly the more interesting part, is um, tile corruption, or I like to call it QMM, or question mark mail, because um, when we try to actually equip that mail um, to that Abra, normally like when there's not another item on it it won't duplicate anything because there's no item it'll actually open up that menu to you know put phrases in the mail uh, or yeah in the mail and because the game already thinks that all six slots are full um it doesn't know where to write that data so normally it would store you know you could you can write up to nine words or phrases in each piece of mail. And so the the first piece of mail will go from, you know, it'll go from memory address like zero to eight. And then the next one will go from like nine to 17 or whatever it is. Um, but when you try to equip this seventh mail, the game kind of breaks because it's like, oh, this is not a number one through six. And so it goes all the way up to 255. And so the game follows that same formula of saying, okay, if this is mail number one, we put the data here in memory, but now we technically have mail number 255. And so the game jumps way, way, way farther into memory than it normally would. Uh, and it just so happens to be that it corrupts um, certain locations in the, in the world or in the map that you're currently in. And so that's how we're able to walk on water like that um, and get this tentacle. It's also, it is interesting, like, is there a reason why you choose the tentacle over Marsh Stomp? Or, like, yeah, Marsh Stomp at this point, one put eventually it would be if you would evolve it up. Yeah, this was like, this was the probably the biggest optimization um, compared to the old route. The, the old route did just use Swampert uh, for the whole game. Uh, the main reason is that duping all these candies is pretty slow. It takes maybe four seconds to produce a single candy, uh, and you really want to be level 100 
to skip all the experience text boxes. Um, it adds up to quite a lot over the course of the run. Because we, we can't skip any trainers. We still have to fight all the normal trainers in the game. So it skips quite a few text boxes. Um, but as you can see, Marshtomp would only be level 16 here at this point in the game. Uh, so that would be 84 rare candies. Uh, whereas we can get tentacles up to level 35 because we're walking on water and so the game will give us water encounters uh, but it so normally you'd only be able to do that with surf right so the game would can give you higher level encounters if you've run glitchless you know sometimes you'll be at like level 33 with um marsh top and you'll still end up getting an encounter even though you've repelled just because they can go up to level 35. um so that's the biggest time save is instead of generating 84 rare candies, you only need to generate 65. Um, and yeah, like I said, making each rare candy is about four seconds. So that already saves like a minute and a half, two minutes. And then using each rare candy is another few seconds. Um, so that saves like another minute or so right there. Um, they both do pretty well throughout the game. I would say that they're like level 100 Swampert and level 100 Tenacruel are pretty equal. I think Tenacruel might do a little bit better um, at the Elite Four. We probably didn't optimize Swampert as much as we possibly could have, uh, but at this point in the run, Tenacruel only needs two turns of setup uh, throughout the entire game. You have to use one X attack on Glacia and one X attack on Drake. Um, whereas the Swampert route needed, I want to say, three or four uh, turns of setup throughout the run. There's also like quite a few manips that you made for this to kind of set yourself up to do these glitches. Can you talk a little bit about uh, kind of the new... The, the, there's a, at least two earlier on manips that really yeah. help uh, get things set up here. Yeah, there's a lot of RNG manipulation within the first like 30 minutes, and then it's really chill after that because you don't have to do like a Kyogre or a Groudon Manip or anything, which is nice. Um, but to actually dupe an item, well, we need at least one of the item in the first place. Um, the only way to really get a rare candy early would be pickup, uh, which is why we have two Zigzagoons in the party at this point. Um, Kind of a small tangent. Originally, it was thought that this glitch could only be activated with six Pokemon in your party because you fill up six of the slots of mail and then you thief and then, okay, now you have access to that seventh piece of mail. Um, but we actually found a secondary way of activating the glitch. And so each time you activate it, it kind of fills up one of the slots. Um, and so we can actually do this with only five Pokemon in the party now, which is pretty nice. Um, but the best way to get a rare candy is with pickup, which in this game, Zigzagoon has pickup, which is very convenient because you can catch it, uh, right from the start. It, um, the hard part is actually getting the rare candy. The Zigzagoons aren't too hard, uh, but what we did is immediately after the Calvin fight, which is kind of like the first fight in the game after your rival fight, uh, we save and quit and do a chain manip, sort of um, emerald style, if anybody has seen the emerald glitchless run, where instead of manipping a Abra into a Talo, um, you manip a one Zigzagoon, catch it, and then chain that into a second Zigzagoon. Um, it's nice to do it on that route, just because normally you don't have a repel at that point, and so you're going to get encounters anyways. Uh, so it's a way to kind of avoid, and, uh, you avoid useless encounters and you actually get useful encounters, uh, which is good. And then that's honestly the easy part. That manip isn't too hard. There is a little bit of, um, similar to Emerald, there's like some audio cue stuff because sometimes you'll get a different Zigzagoon on a different tile, uh, which is a little tricky, but you get the hang of it. The really hard part is actually getting the rare candy. Um, which, unlike Emerald in this game, the rare candy item pool is always the same, no matter what level your Zigzagoon is at. Um, I think in Emerald you need to be at like level 30 or something to even have a chance of getting a rare candy. Uh, in this game, that's not the case. You always have, if you pick up an item, 
you have a 10% chance of getting a rare candy. Um, the odds of actually picking something up in general are 10% per battle. Uh, so it's kind of like a 1% chance to get a rare candy every battle. Um, so we kind of need to RNG manip that. That's the hardest manip of the run. Honestly, it's kind of harder than Mudkip. So because it's, dur because it's during a battle, and battles are kind of tricky to RNG manip in this game because your RNG moves twice as fast in battle compared to out of battle. So if you enter the battle at a different time, you're going to start advancing um, at double speed, you know, earlier or later than you normally would. So not only do we have to time ending the battle, because that's when the rare candy uh, RNG is called, we also have to enter, or we also have to time entering the battle so that we always start advancing RNG uh, at a consistent time. And that is very hard. The window is also very small. Um, because the RNG advances twice as fast in battle, you're always going to be stuck on either an even-numbered RNG frame or an odd-numbered RNG frame. And you can't really tell which. It just depends on what frame you enter the battle. Um, if, you're an, if you're on a even-numbered RNG frame, you have a two-frame window to get a rare candy. If you're on an odd frame um, RNG value, you are on an odd RNG frame, you have a one frame window to pick up a candy. Uh, so it's kind of like a 50-50 to be either a one frame window or a two frame window. Um, so definitely pretty tricky to get that rare candy. Um, you can just get lucky. There's two battles after you get the Zigzagoon, um, and you have two Zigzagoons, so it's kind of like a 2% chance for bat per battle to get a rare candy. Um, I believe on Icy's run, he got a rare candy without doing the Manip. He just happened to get it before the Manip, um, and so he you're able to skip that save and reset uh, if that happens, which is pretty nice. But yeah, that's... It's kind of necessary, unless you really just want to grind out that uh, few percent chance to just get a random rare candy. Uh, the Really, the only other one that we could get is after we get the mock bike, we could go back to Granite Cave, and there's like a little bit of a, a movement puzzle um, that you have to do, and you can get a rare candy there. Uh, but that would be a pretty significant backtrack. Uh, you'd have to go all the way back to Slateport here, uh, which you could and teleport you, back to, but then you'd have to... You'd have to fight Rival 2 as well with Marsh Top. Yes, yeah. And that'd be um, horrible. Yeah, that would really be bad, because you're... Oh, yeah, I mean, you could kind of make it like the glitchless route, but that's extra trainers that you normally wouldn't have to fight. Um, and then, yeah, fighting Rival 2 as Marsh Top is just kind of bad in general. Yeah, you'd, you'd lose a lot of time to that. Um, the other RNG manip was the, the tentacle, which it was more complicated than it looked. Um, kind of the hard part is that these tentacles can range from like level 5 to level 35. So finding one that's actually max level, or at least like close to max level, um, is pretty rare. Um, Not to mention getting him stats too, right? So. Yeah, and it needs decent stats, honestly, even at level 100. Um, we kind of got blessed by this one. Um, this one is modest, which isn't ideal because you do use acid and sludge bomb uh, and constrict, which are physical. Um, but plus special attack is still really nice for surf. Um, if it was like rash or... Um, mild or even uh i'm forgetting what the minus speed one is quiet um, yeah. quiet o honestly those would all be better because tentacruel outspeeds everything at level 100 anyways um but this one is about as good as we can get um just with the way that the rng works we've like we've generated like the like fifty thousand frames forward and tried to find better tentacles but this is about the best one that 
um, exists at a reasonably high level. Um, and it just so happens that it's at the max level, which is pretty cool. Um, but you have to wait like 4,000 frames to actually get this encounter, which is pretty late. Um, we kind of weren't sure how worth it that would be, because um, that's like a minute right there of just waiting. Um, until finally I came up with the idea of what if we, we have to duplicate all these rare candies anyways, what if we duplicate rare candies during the manip? That way we are not just sitting there wasting time, we're actually doing something that we have to do um, as we're waiting for RNG to advance. So we basically, um, we duplicate all the rare candies we need minus like 10, and then we save and reset, start duping 10 more candies, then we perform the tile corruption, so we put those phrases into the glitched mail, um, and then we do the manip from there. So it's a really cool strat to um, yeah. get such a late, a late encounter without actually losing much time. Yeah, one, one other thing I found really funny, and, and, and I've watched your uh, the PSR Marathon VOD as well as your, uh, you did a run last night as well for Speed Docs, which was really, really fun to watch. Mm -hmm. um, Constrict, that's quite a quite an interesting move for uh, a speed run, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever seen Constrict in the, any Pokemon speed run. I don't even, I didn't even really know that was a move until we started routing this. But yeah, for those that aren't aware, this is a 10 base power move and it's normal type. Um, so it struggles a little bit, but at level 100, it does some things that are actually kind of useful. Yeah. Uh, for one, it being an, having normal type moves is pretty nice because at level 100, you're not so you're not concerned so much about damage because you're one shotting basically everything. You're more concerned about um, minimizing extra text boxes which if you use a super effective move, you'll get a super effective text box, and then you'll get a not very effective text box if you use a not very effective move. Um, and that's about one and a half seconds every time you get one of those text boxes, um, which adds up quite a lot. Uh, so you can see here, like using Constrict on Numel is pretty nice because the only other type moves we have are Poison and Water, uh, which Numel resists Poison and is weak against Water. Uh, so Constrict is really the only thing that we could use there um, without teaching another move. There is Wrap as well. Uh, we do have Wrap, which is very slightly stronger than Constrict. It's 15 base power instead of 10. That's 50% um, more damage. So it it's, is. Yeah, it's actually quite significant. Sense. Yeah. Um, there are actually places where wrap is viable, um, which I can talk about once we kind of get there in the in the VOD. Um, but wrap is only 85% accurate, so yeah. it's un it's sort of unreliable. Um, and so there are times where if you really wanted to get as fast of a run as possible, it would kind of be optimal to use wrap. Um, but for the most part, I've just been um, using acid in certain situations to guarantee a kill um, instead of risking a miss. Um, but I could see if you really, really want to go for an optimal time where you might have to start relying on wrap. Um, uh, you yeah, mentioned that yeah. that comes up in certain parts of the VOD. Uh, just tell me uh, where, where about is that is in the VOD. Uh, that'll be at maxi one, so it'll be in like three minutes or so. Uh, um, or, or the trainer right before maxi one. Is well to do that then? Yeah. While we're on the topic yeah. a bit. Yeah, so this uh, first Numal is a range to die to constrict, even though we have 80 levels on it. Um, <laughs> I don't know how, but it is not guaranteed to die to constrict. It's less than an 85% chance to die. So technically, if you wanted to avoid any extra text boxes, 
it would be optimal to use wrap because wrap is 85% accurate. So you'd have a higher chance of one shotting it uh, compared to using constrict. Um, so very kind of small optimization there. Um, but it's, it's a pretty cool thing. There's like, it's very interesting to kind of route Pokemon in this way. Um, just because like in most glitchless runs, you're not concerned a ton about um, like these small, these small factors of like how many text boxes can we avoid just because generally the fights themselves are already so hard that you're more focused on what gives us the best chance to win. Um, but that's not really the case here because we're going to win all the fights. Um, so kind of focusing on those like uh, very small kind of micro time saves is, is a lot of fun, honestly. Um, it's a breath of fresh air compared to um, kind of the glitchless routing and stuff like that. Yeah, that really reminds me of um, like in Scarlet and Violet where we're always so over leveled, um, at least for like a lot of the early game stuff. And it comes down to not using super effective moves. And in our case, uh, you know, animations are always on. So always using the move that has the fastest animation too. Um, mm -hmm. You're definitely right. It is a it's a nice, nice change of pace from normal glitchless routing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, very good point. Um, yeah, I, I, I haven't learned much about Scarlet Violet runs. Does, does the text in that game print instantly, or does the length of the the move matter as well? Um, it's effectively instant. It's like eight characters per frame, I want to say. So like, unless oh. you have an egregiously long text box, it should be fine. Gotcha. Yeah, but like, yeah, if you had like a really long move in that game versus like a really short move, it yeah, save time, yeah. And so that's a factor in this run as well, honestly, is the game prints one character per frame, I'm pretty sure. So using like Surf over Bubble Beam can actually be useful um, just to save a few frames. Um, yeah, there's, there's so many small optimizations uh, that we've come up with. Um, what else? Oh, okay, so kind of one thing that was hard about the transition from Japanese to English is that there are quite a few version differences. Uh, Flannery here is one of them. Well, it's one of them that makes a big difference. Um, I say big, it makes like a two-second difference. But um, Torkoal has a plus defense nature, I believe, in Japanese. Um, whereas it's it's either minus defense or it's neutral in English. Um, regardless, it has higher defense in the Japanese version. So on that, you actually cannot use acid. It's like not a great range to die uh, to acid. So on the Japanese version, you do actually bubble beam here. Uh, but on English, we can just mash acid three times and win the fight um, guaranteed, which is pretty cool. I find it. Oh yeah, we can see the the side by side comparison. Oh, oh. there we go. <laughs> Perfect timing. And this is also Damon's world record, a one fifty oh two, which time. I assume they still end the timing, like time still ends after credits for this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's another big difference. Is oh in, wow, yeah. In English, you stop the the timer as you fade to the credits and then in japanese you have to stop the timer at the end of the credits um which is like a few minutes long i think actually um yeah, yeah this run was really solid i th i think he said that he can definitely get a one four four nine um in this i probably a one four eight we found some more optimization since then um yeah, but this was a really solid run. I think this, I might be off with this, but didn't Damon order the Japanese version like just before the glitch was found? Is that why <laughs> he's running the Japanese version? Because he yeah. got it? So yeah, uh, him and I worked really hard on creating the new tena the tentacle route and optimizing it and everything. Um, so yeah, he was a huge help in all of this. Um, and he really wanted to run it just because we had put in a lot of work and so we wanted to actually try it out. 
Um, this was maybe like probably less than a week before we learned about the um, the fact that it worked on English, um, which was kind of sad because yeah, he he spent like fifty or fifty bucks on it or whatever, um, and then immediately everyone starts running on English, which is a little bit sad. But yeah, got the collection I at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told him if we find like a big new uh, a big new glitch on English or something, I will personally send him a copy of English Ruby because <laughs> it would be so cool to find something something big. Well, I guess like within like is there any potential areas that you've been looking into at all, or that anyone's been looking into, or is it just being focusing on getting like the run? Like um, all the route sorted, even the the route is still seeing some changes. Um, oh, here's a honestly, this is a pretty big difference between English and Japanese. He's fighting Brawly oh. now, um, after Flannery. Um, whereas in my run on English, we fight it um, immediately after we get the tentacle, um, which is because. The NP some of the NPCs, like the trainers in this game, also have different lengths of vision. So if you've seen the glitchless run, we go through Rust Turf Tunnel, um, through Verdant Turf Town, after normally you do it after Watson and you get strength, and then you do it again after Flannery. You go through and you backtrack all the way to Norman. Um, there's a trainer in there that on English he won't see you unless you walk up to him uh, but on Japanese you uh, he has an extra tile of vision so you actually can't go through the tunnel on the right side without fighting an optional trainer um, so to circumvent that we um, we delay Brawly to later um, because we have to to actually get strength on the Japanese version because we don't want to fight the trainer we like leave um we leave meteor falls from the bottom and then go through pedalberg and get strength from the left side um and so that makes it a little bit faster to fight brawly later in the japanese version um which is pretty interesting um yeah lots of small differences that honestly kind of make a difference um but that kind of leads into what you were asking about like what new things are we working on there's so much stuff that is so close to working but just barely doesn't work um which is really frustrating but it also gives me a lot of hope that um we're going to find something soon um just because there's so much stuff that almost works um so yeah that thing that i mentioned about going through the tunnel and then biking all the way back to pedalberg after you get your first four gym badges. That's like a pretty hefty detour. That's like a minute almost um, of just movement just to get back to Pedalberg as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. um, because on this on this route with the Abra, and this applies to Glitchless too, um, normally you would death, or in the old, old route, you would death warp back to Pedalberg um, by getting poisoned on Flannery. Uh, and then you could teleport back there. Uh, but with the Abra route, you don't do that anymore because you set your teleport point in Mauville. So you have to go all the way from Mauville um, through the tunnel and then go to um, Pedalberg from there. And yeah, the reason why they why Damon delayed Brawly is because you can't actually go that way. You got to go down through Slateport, take the boat back to Duford, and then take the boat back to Pedalberg. Um, which is like 20 seconds slower or so, but since you're already going there, that's why you just fight Brawly while you're there and then hop back on the boat. Um, so instead of doing that, something that is really close to working is a, I call it a wrong warp because that's basically what it is. Um, it's an extension of like the tile corruption glitch where you can spawn in almost any tile that you want. Uh, there are certain tiles in the game that um, just by existing, they have like special properties. 
So like a ledge, for example, like you can hop over the little cliff and it'll like put you on the other side of it. Um, you can spawn those in and jump over them. Um, you can also do that with surf, like even though it's a place that you normally wouldn't be able to surf, you can press A on it and surf on it. Um, one tile that, and this is very new, like a couple days old, one tile that also has this sort of behavior is like a hole or like a like a little pit. Um, I'm trying to think of the best example of this. Like, like in Flannery's in, Gym? Yeah, like Flannery's Gym gotcha. or like in Wallace's gym, like in Sutopolis, the ice puzzle. If you if you walk on one of the tiles twice and it, like the little hole opens up and you fall through, um, they have those in Mount Pyre as well. Those behave very weird um, or very weirdly if they are spawned in uh, through tile corruption. So if you spawn one in and then save and reset, and then fall down the hole, the game will actually teleport you back to Petalburg, uh, which is really <laughs> cool. Um, Petalburg is like the default point in this game. Um, for some reason, it's it's just marked as like map number zero. Uh, so if the game doesn't know where to put you, it'll just put you there. Um, Cause it's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll just go with the default. Um, so, that would be a really cool way to skip uh, biking all the way back to Petalburg and just teleport there instantly. The only problem, well, okay, there's two problems with this. One is that actually accessing these hole tiles is pretty limited. Um, the way that the game works internally is each area in the map generally has like a global tile set like you got the basic stuff like grass and like a pokemon center and like a ledge and all this stuff but then each area also has a secondary tile set that has like the map specific stuff so like in meteor falls for example it's got like those kind of yellow colored tiles um, and those like little puddles that you can jump over and stuff like that. So the whole tiles are not in the global tile set. So there's only a very few areas that we can actually spawn one of those tiles in. Um, Meteor Falls is one of them, which is, you know, not too far out of the way. Uh, so you could actually do it there. The problem with that is that when you fall down the hole and warp back to Petalburg, you fall out of bounds. Uh, so you're like stuck in the trees, like on the border of Petalburg. Um, and this game really hates you being out of bounds. It just, it locks you in place and it will not let you move if you are out of bounds at all. Um, so if we could find a way to get back in bounds, that'd be a really cool strat. Um, but Right now, we don't know of any way to do that. That is unfortunate. It's also, wasn't there something with, like you mentioned during the marathon with Victory Road? Or am I misremembering that as well? Yeah, so there's two things with Victory Road. One of them was uh, a, a month or two ago, and this was Damon, like this was huge shout outs to Damon for coming up with this idea. Um, okay, a little bit of background. There's a glitch you can do and this, you can actually do this without tile corruption on the Japanese version of the game. If you have the acro bike and you kind of do like a, like you can do like a little side hop back and forth. If you do this next to a water tile like that you would surf on, um, you can actually surf on land. Um, it's just a little oversight with the acro bike. That only works on Japanese. Um, on English though, you can still set it up if you spawn a water tile through tile corruption. You can surf on it and then surf around on land. Um, yeah, basically like you're walking but you're in that surfing animation. One, this doesn't really do much. Surfing is like the same speed as running, so it's not really faster. Um, 
but one weird quirk of land surfing is that you know when you're like surfing on the water and you like jump onto a piece of land or something you kind of go through that animation and it like pushes you a tile forward and then it makes you jump off your little surfing guy um the way that the game checks for this is it kind of checks um each each tile kind of has a an extra set of data associated with it that has a, a like a height value to kind of indicate okay this tile is above this tile and so if the tile that you're surfing on is at a different elevation than the tile you're jumping to the game will let you get off the the surfing mode and hop back onto the land one place that you can do this and we can see this here on the screen in Fortree these little like wood bridges that Damon walks across, those are actually at a higher elevation than the ground. Um, and so that bridge right before, or like to the south of Winona's gym, you can actually hop off of surf if you're land surfing and you can enter Winona's gym uh, without getting the Devon scope. So you can do kind of a small sequence break with that um, where you would, yeah, you'd be able to fight Winona and then uh not need to get the devon scope unfortunately you still have to get the devon scope anyways because you have to go to lily cove after that um and you can't get to lily cove you can't get around steven without getting the devon scope so that unfortunately isn't useful in the speed run um but it does look kind of funny okay so anyways that's kind of the background of like how land surfing works in victory road really the start and the end are in the same room it's just you can't get to the end without going through like the the basements and like going through all the puzzles and stuff like that um but if you could land surf in that first room of victory road um there is a there's a bridge there um and you could actually get on that bridge and then because you're land surfing you could jump off of that bridge and skip all the victory roads so you could skip to the very end like to the exit uh without doing there's two mandatory fights in victory road at the moment um and then there's a third one being wally wally's at the end of victory road in ruby sapphire um you could skip both of those fights and skip all the strength puzzles all the rock smash puzzles and all that good stuff you could skip all of that and just go straight to wally um the only problem is that tile corruption happens in different areas based on like what location you're in and it's kind of complicated it's based on how wide the the map is that you're currently in and victory road just has a specific width so the tile corruption that happens in that room in victory road is one tile out of bounds um, so if it was one tile further to the left, we'd be able to land surf in that room and then skip essentially all of Victory Road, um, which would save like two minutes probably, um, maybe more. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's very disappointing that it's one tile away from working. Um, I hope that we can find a way to activate it through some other means. Um, but yeah, that would be really cool. Um, the other idea, which was just kind of talked about yesterday for the first time, is there's there's <laughs> sorry there's a lot of stuff. It's hard to explain all the all the background that goes into this. No worries. Um, but when we talked about like falling down the whole tiles earlier, um, I mentioned you have to save and quit to get warped to Petalburg. If you don't save and quit there's a couple things that well yeah if you don't save and quit something else happens the game will warp you to the last place you entered on the previous route so like let's say you enter meteor falls from route 114 which is how you do, normally do it in the speed run if you were to spawn a hole tile there and then fall down the hole without saving and quitting you will be plop down on the door of wherever you last entered so there's like Lynette's house in the corner 
Um, you could even like open a secret base and enter the secret base and then fall down the hole and it would warp you back to the entrance of the secret base. Um, the other thing is if you don't enter any locations in the previous route, the game will just plop you down kind of in the middle of the previous route. So in this case, Route 114. Um, one thing that is almost possible with this is kind of abusing that on any route. So like you can actually enter Evergrand City, but you can't actually get into Victory Road without Waterfall, right? Um, if there was a way to go directly from Evergrand City to like Meteor Falls, for example, or Shoal Cave is another place that has um, like a whole tile that you can spawn. If we were able to go directly from Evergrande to one of those places, that the game would think that Evergrande is the last place that we visited. And so once we fell down that hole, the game would warp us to basically the middle of Evergrande City, uh, which would let us get basically into Evergrande City without using Waterfall. Problem one is that there's no way to do this currently. Like I said earlier, the um, the places that have hole tiles are pretty scattered um, and pretty hard to access. There's no way to like get into Meteor Falls without going through another route first. There's no way to get to Shoal Cave without going through another route first. Um, same with like Mount Pyre and stuff like that. So we can't really do that. But even if we could when you fall down in the middle of like when you kind of wrong warp to the middle of Evergrande, the game puts you like one tile out of bounds uh, so even if you could do that you'd be a little bit too far out of bounds to actually um, move and so you'd kind of be stuck there not really able to do anything uh, the game also the game doesn't set your fly point as like active until you actually um, you climb the waterfall and then there's like a couple tiles that have scripts associated with them that will say, okay, now you can fly here. Um, but if you just warp to the middle of the map, uh, you wouldn't actually activate those scripts and so you couldn't fly from there. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of things that are standing in the way of that. Um, if we found out how to bypass both of those somehow, we could in theory skip waterfall, um, which would be crazy. Yeah, it's like, well, how much did they, they skip, like, third of the game or something? Yeah, I want to actually... Ball? Yeah, I'm going to check my splits real quick, because I want to see how... Like, the other thing is, you could also skip dive. Dive is not required in Victory Road um, at all. Um, you do have to get Winona's badge. Kind of a weird quirk of... The gen or I, I don't know if well yeah it's not for fire leaf green um, but I'm pretty sure in ruby sapphire and emerald the elite four actually only checks for Winona's badge because normally that's the only badge that you could like kind of skip because you don't need fly to get anywhere um, without glitches so the game will actually let you into the elite four as long as you have Winona's badge so in theory you could get Winona's badge, um, you'd have Surf, and then you could immediately go to Evergrande City, fall down a hole, plop down in the middle of Evergrande City, go through Victory Road, and then fight the Elite Four from there. Um, and that would skip all of the Tate and Liza split. <laughs> you wouldn't have to fight Tate and Liza at all. Um, that would skip all of the Maxi 2 split, or Archie 2. Um, that'd skip all of Wallace. You wouldn't have to go, you wouldn't have to handle Kyogre or Groudon or anything like that. Um, that would save probably 15 to 20, yeah, 15 to 20 minutes if I had to guess, uh, which would be wild. Um, but yeah, there's just a couple things that are like barely standing in the way of that. But there's, there's always potential. Exactly, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> this has like consumed my free time now. 
is like I'm always just trying random stuff when I uh, when I'm not streaming or you know not doing schoolwork or other stuff. I'm just messing around with this game to see what we can break. Yeah, and to be fair, if you hadn't have done that before, this Kagri wouldn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, here on Damon's screen is another uh, version difference. In, and this is in both Ruby and Sapphire. Um, normally in the Aqua or Magma Hideout, the, you don't have to fight any of the trainers except for the admin at the end of the at the end of the hideout. Um, but in the Japanese version of the game, there is a required extra trainer to actually get through um, each of those places. So honestly, there's. Even though you know Japanese benefits a lot from faster text, um, there's quite a few benefits that English has, um, which is honestly why the times are so close. I mean, the world records are only a couple minutes apart. Uh, you know, and also the, the timing at the end of the credits makes a big difference compared to at the start of the credits. Um, yeah. Japanese also kind of struggles in the early game. Uh, Roxanne is bulkier. I think she has a, it might be a plus special defense nature in Japanese. Um, basically, it's a lot harder to kill, which really, like, that's the biggest problem is just the Roxanne split. Um, it's very tricky. To optimize that as much as possible while also making it, like, feasible to actually beat um, I do think it'd be cool one thing we haven't really explored very much is um, like going into Roxanne at a lower level and maybe skipping one of the gym trainers or something like that uh, currently we do the rare candy RNG manip on the second gym trainer um, but it would be cool to see if we could maybe skip one of those the main problem, and this is kind of the reason why we really need Marsh Stomp, is to activate the glitch, we need a double battle. Any double battle works. But there's not that many good ones. We could go all the way back to uh, Rustboro, and there's that there those two girls on the bridge that have a low tad and a c dot i think which that would honestly be really easy because they're like level seven and the problem though is that's a huge huge backtrack because you can't activate the glitch without thief you have to go all the way to the to slate port to get thief and so then you'd have to go all the way back from slate port to rustboro if you wanted to do that so really the only other double battle that we can access at that point is the twins Gina and Mia, I think they're called. Uh, the ones with the... Or no, it's Amy and Liv. Gina and Mia are the other ones. Um, it's it's the two that have the plus and mine in. And so, really the best way to take them out easily is with Marsh Stomp, because Marsh Stomp gets Mud Shot, and generally just Okos each of them. Uh, which is why actually hitting level 16 is pretty important for this run, at least before we get the, the tentacle. Interesting. Um, I'm just looking at the time slightly because then we've been, been on this topic maybe for like around 50 minutes at this point. Uh, I guess, is there anything else in particular with like this route that you really want to mention before get on to the other focus topic? And the break um we i think we covered pretty much all the kind of crazy stuff at this point um one thing that damon doesn't do in this run because this was also a pretty new optimization is we actually teach sludge bomb which kind of seems like a detour you have to fly back to duford to actually get it uh, but it does end up saving time in the elite four so that's pretty cool you you end up with a move set of waterfall Surf, Acid, and Sludge Bomb, which is pretty funny. You just run two Water Stabs and two Poison Stabs, which is kind of satisfying. 
Um, but yeah, I think that's that's it from my side. Um, like I said, yeah, we're, we're finding a bunch of new stuff every day. Um, so I'm really excited to see what the next, what the next big route change will be. Yeah, sounds good. I mean, I think, I think a lot of people are like, the, cause it's, it's very rare to have like a game that's been out for so long and then just a category like this specifically. It's like a glitch category yeah. pops up out of nowhere, <laughs> effectively. It's this yeah. game is two decades old, so it's it's wild. Ah, oh, I wish you didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's age, crazy. everybody, yeah. This game is basically the same age as me. It's pretty funny. Um, yeah, it's it's so cool to see a new category just pop pop up out of nowhere, though. Um, yeah, I kind of wish you know we could get like a glimpse into the future for like a year or two and just see uh what what stuff gets found and kind of how low this time can go um yeah i think i think the english version can definitely 151 with the current route if you get like really lucky um i don't know about 150 i think i think maybe with like a task level rng um but yeah for for a 14x we're definitely gonna go back to the lab and search for some new glitches sounds great to hear and but yeah i think and in that case it's time to move on to both the break and the uh other focus topic which is scoa's black white sub 310 world record um just think so blue my way you're you're still uh, sticking around until uh you're coming back after the break aren't you just to yeah uh, i'll be here i'll be hanging out with you yeah yeah, so in that case, for everyone, uh, we'll be back, right, uh, back after it's just over 20 minutes that this uh, the conversation that I had with Skoa. So, yeah, enjoy listening. In the meantime, in a bit. Thank you to whoever passed this on to me. This is currently during the break right now, but we have Skoa here to talk about his uh, black white. Sub 310, any percent run. And starting off with the plasma skip, Sko, if you want to, I guess, talk about this, because you told me to highlight this bit specifically, at least to start yes. with. So, hello. Um, yeah, this is the new black any percent record. Um, as I'm sure you can probably imagine, the main reason I've asked to, to highlight this specifically is because this is the latest brand new strat that has um, come to black and white one um so yes what you're seeing in front of you actually finally has happened for anyone who's been in the community for quite a while plasma skip has been something that we've been theorizing since about 2019 i think uh it's been in the works um but previously we didn't have any tools to search for it we had no real good understanding of how dust clouds were generated the location that they'd be generated in and everything was just kind of down to like you know brute forcing it back then thanks to a lot of recent developments over the years we kind of understood how to brute force dust clouds to spawn in the first place the only real thing we were missing for a really long time was how to um predict the location that they would appear in um and even then we've got a very good understanding of it in black now as you can probably imagine um, it's different again for white too, so um, that part's still being figured out. So, um, yeah, thank you to primarily Twisty and Lincoln, who made the tools necessary for um, this to be easily achievable by absolutely anybody who wants to do this for their runs. Um, with the tools that they've provided, you can do absolutely, like, th th this is like the easiest thing in the world. It literally tells you the tiles that you have to stand on and all that like it's so so simple right um so yeah the run itself is really 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 solid um that first segment for like the first r and 15 um is absolutely ridiculous i think this is maybe the first ever 115 elisa um in black and white one and even like you can see by the grids that i have for my pb my pb is already like a ridiculous start and to get on a run that rivals it or even 
beats it. Like, whenever I was doing attempts, I was just like, okay, if I'm even, like, kind of close to this, um, that's good enough. Um, but to get on a run that was, like, actually beating this consistently in the early game was just mental. Um, but yeah, obviously the, the main thing being Plasma Skip, um, and the, um, the, like, that, it's such, like, a huge time save. Um, it saves, uh, like, a minute on its own. It's actually slightly more, um, because in this run, as you're about to see after this battle, I do get an encounter, uh, which is completely my own fault. I didn't really check after, um, after performing that if I could get out of the cave without getting an encounter. I just kind of assumed that I'd be able to because from like a small test I did on the seed, there was like a really long period of no encounters. But what I didn't realize is depending on the repel spot, I wouldn't actually reach that. So where I reach it in the run is very, very different. Um, and a couple of steps I ended up taking did give me an encounter. Um, so after this dialogue, you, you'll see that. Um, so I was really miffed about that at the time um but i got to the point where like i thought about it after and i was like the rest of the early game was so good um i don't really care enough about 15 seconds to try and grind for a run that rivals that at the start um because that's like i could put another like two months into playing black and white one and just not get anything even remotely close to that again um without new strats being involved um yeah there you go i was i'm only noticing now i was a whopping two tiles away from getting out of the cave which makes that even worse because i took two extra tiles on the lower floor so i actually would have gotten away with that if i didn't mess up my movement beforehand class okay that's really good to know if i ever come back to that um sick Bringing but up yeah past trauma there yeah at uh i actually didn't realize how um how close i was to it um in my head i was like maybe like six tiles away i was like ah oh, there's nothing you can do uh but after seeing that yeah there's absolutely something i i could have done but well, oh well like i said the rest of it was so good um yeah. and then even past this the run was like ridiculous until um the like the penultimate fight just like my pb i had a massive time loss on the final end fight uh, i actually died um the my best possible time going into that split was like 309 1x i think so i lost quite a lot in the in the the final couple fights well, but you actually like because we can see your best possible time in the moment i know like you said that this is the first time you did plasma skip in the run is it yes or... And but if so, like obviously it doesn't take that into account yet. But your time is a three oh nine fifty four, and your best possible times there is a three oh nine forty seven. That does show like the level that you were playing at, even with that fifteen seconds that you lost. Like yeah, this is a really it, it, good run. <laughs> it, it's one of the strengths of getting such a ridiculous early game. Like that that Lenora gold it was like I think it was community best by like almost twenty seconds wow. at the time. Well, well, at the time, I I, I guess oh. it still is. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, even after that, like I was so close to my goals, which is insane because post plasma skip, the missing experience actually matters quite a lot. There's a lot of things that become ranges and stuff, and you actually have to pick up an extra candy to compensate for it. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's insane how close I I was to it. Um, but it's a time that I can't see myself trying to improve unless someone else beats it um just because everything else was so solid that like i i'm really playing for a run that i would get on a similar pace and just hope that i don't lose at n again even though the end death was kind of my fault looking back on it um there's something i could have done that would have uh i would have solved quite a lot of the issues um but you live and you learn so yeah so i didn't notice like with the plasma skip so what there's is it three that you could skip but it seemed like you fought one of them 
at least in life. So there was, I definitely saw there was like the, I'm, I'm trapped. There's like the one that you go around like a corner to the right. It just called spawning from there. That's so you avoid that one. But there was one way you walk up like that single file path, and there's the, the grunt looking down. You fought that one. Is it? Yes. So yeah. with the way that dust clouds work, you can only have one dust cloud generated at any given ah. time on your screen. Um, and so if there's one already on the screen, you have to, you can fight a trainer, get a wild encounter or reload the area. Going into your bag doesn't get rid of them. Um, okay. So in or like theoretically, you can skip all seven trainers, um, but it would involve purposefully manipulating an encounter which costs 15 seconds to maybe only skip uh, a trainer that has one Pokemon, for example. And a one poke trainer in Gen 5 only takes, I think it's actually less than 30 seconds. So the amount of extra work that you'd have to put in and the amount of seeds that you'd have to filter out for maybe an extra 13, 14 seconds is insane. And then you'd lose even more experience. So you'd have an even rougher time in Skyla's gym as well. Um, and Skyler's gym already becomes a bit worse and some of the subsequent fights like ranges and stuff reversal does help with that a bit But again that revolves around you being in a good HP range that you can get away with stuff like that Okay, that's That's interesting though because I mean I It's been a long time since I played those games. I never knew that it was only one disc cloud at a time Yeah, but... it's, it's it's one of the unfortunate limitations, but um, like we, we know we could do all seven theoretically, but it's it's an insane amount of extra work and the returns become a lot more minimal. Um, mm. And then, yeah, it'll add further complications in the run to a segment that already becomes worse because of it. Fair enough then. But yeah, so just thinking like, because you mentioned you got a golden Lenore. Uh, was there anything particularly special about Burr, given that you got the gold there as well? And also, I guess, because I see that it is close to Sabawa, has anyone got under a Sabawa? No, that... I, I think that is the best Berg time. Um, okay. It Honestly, it might even be the best Lenora time as well. Like, that, this this run was very, very, very strong. Um, okay. That the, the Lenora gold was just insane. Um, the Berg one was... Because I, 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 I keep a spreadsheet of like the the community some of my best for these things, mm. uh, for the for the DS games. Um, and whenever I came to black and white one for the grind that got my previous record, um, I ended up getting it really really quickly. Um, but there was nothing that, like, I don't think anyone else had put in quite like the same amount of um, grinding for it because I got it with like a degree of like uh, it was quite it was quite easy to grab. Um, and I just kept getting lower and lower, even with like detects and stuff, because there's a lot of variance on that split. It's very, very, very hard to get anything good. Um, there, that on pheasant, by the way, is one of the the things that becomes worse. That that range goes from like eighty percent to sixty percent. Oh. Um, okay. But yeah, it's just it's it's another one of those things. that's like it's just one of the splits that just more things went right as opposed to like. It's one of the ones that's just, it's not about how much goes well, it's about how little goes poorly. Minimizing the the time losses, which to be yeah. fair is probably the main thing in speedrunning, more so than maybe... Oh. Yeah, I, I suppose when you've, when you've got games like Pokemon, it's just like how yeah. much doesn't go bad, really. Yeah. So, I'm going to skip it forward a bit. Because you mentioned there was a I mean, maybe have the end death in the background towards the end, but having just a bit of nosy about of uh, oh you don't have many splits do you? Yeah, a black, black and white one. That's there's not many landmark things. Um, I mean, it's, it's more quite, convenient it's quite a hard me. one to split up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite a hard game to split up, and I know a lot of people and a lot of different games like make individual splits for the E4. I've never done it. I've just always done the entire E4 under one split, like regardless of what game I've played. I don't know, just never felt right to me to split them up. I I go back and forth in my mind on that one. I think it just depends on how much I want to press baseball. 
Fair enough. I, think I, I do like pressing the split button. But, uh, yeah, but like, so yeah, you got the massive time save of this guy split. But yeah, you, it is a very solid amount. You're like, you don't, like, you don't lose any time other than a second at Dreden compared yeah, to. Yeah, and, and even you. then, that it's a hard split to match. It involves things going well on the previous split um, to take out a healing menu to be able to match it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm happy enough with it. The, the death is one of the things in my mind that's like, I would like to go and improve on it, but I, I just can't be bothered to grind for a run that has the same, the same like speed throughout the rest of it. It's just, it's not worth it. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's fair. Cause I mean, like, so I don't, uh, how, like how many attempts was it between approximately since your previous PB and then getting this run? Oh, um, like, I, don't, I don't know if you had a bit of a break or. Well, I, I took a break and I came back to this pretty much immediately whenever we had Plasma Skip. Um, wow. So I've just pulled up my previous run. My previous run was attempt 588. So only that's... less than 40, which is pretty damn good. Yeah, I was going to say, that's not, that's not too bad. Like, and I don't... Like, would there be stuff like you reset for Manip in there if made a mistake or something, I don't know. A good majority of those is honestly resetting for the Lily Pop catch because it's right. slightly under 50%. And I had a drought on this one day where I streamed for two hours. And I caught the Lily Pop once in 12 attempts. Like 12 Ooh. like throws of the Pokeball. Because I always took I always throw twice and if I don't catch it I reset. Yeah. Um and yeah I went on a drought where I was like one for twelve on catches, which is just ridiculous. Yeah. But in that case, yeah, that's this is definitely not been you know, a long grind, at least. Yeah, I think it only. I I felt quite under pressure to get it to try and defend the Gen Five sweep. I'm I'm quite I'm quite proud that I've I've got it. So I wanted to put in the work to to be able man, to maintain it, and I've got like that that cushion now for this category that I'm I'm happy enough. Is um, this the the first run with the positive skip or? Like completed run since that's been found, or had other people started getting closer to you? Twisty has done. Twisty actually figured this out for an alt main of all things. Um, <laughs> it was for nice. an alt main of Excadrill. So, like, I think this is the first finished any percent run um, right. of like the, like the main route. Uh, Paraz has been doing attempts of it as well. Um, I don't think he is anymore, but at the time that I was playing, he was actively doing attempts. Um, but no, I don't think anyone had, um, had, had really threatened it. It was just more of like a, a thing of, I wanted to, to keep myself like ahead of the curve more than anything. Oh, yeah. I mean, definitely, definitely nothing wrong with that. It's a lot easier to improve your own time compared to trying to beat someone else's. At least I find. I, I, I actually struggle with that. You know, I, oh, I, really? I, 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 I struggle to find the motivation whenever I'm already on the, on the top. I, I am always driven more by either it's being threatened or if someone else is at the top. I find it very hard to continuously play if I already have the record. It's the number one reason that I tend to get it and then just drop and go to a different game. It's just I, I just don't have the same drive for it in, in the same way. Unless I got it and it's like terrible or something. Yeah, that then I'll then I'll improve it. But Oh yeah. I mean like it's it's definitely not like a. Maybe I'm just the weird one <laughs> <laughs> with that, but maybe, or maybe I'm just stubborn and always just stick to Sol and Shield. But anyway, <laughs> uh, that so, it, that is on my radar, by the way, to do Sword and Shield one day. Which version? That's, uh, that's I I'd I'd be doing a Sword. Oh, double root, double root. Uh, whichever's faster. Uh, it's debatable. Candy Force will definitely finish a lot more top runs, but if you want to get very, very top, I, I still think it is subtle, but you, you're doing a lot with that. Better. But anyway, that's that's not the topic of this. Um, I am skipping forward because you mentioned the death, and then for in traditional podcast fashion, that death has to be played in the background. That, at least that, at one that's point. Fair. The, 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 this was a heart-wrenching one. 
to be fair. Um, it's one of those moments where like you're so close to the end and then mm. that goes wrong and you just have visions of the entire thing spiraling as like shit. Like everything else is just going to fall apart because it's happened so many times. Um, especially in PSR, it's quite commonplace. Yeah. Um, but thankfully, um, it was like the the one and only really, really bad part. Um, so yeah, the, the, this is the normal strat. Um, you get rid of Reshi here, and you bring out um, Stoutland. And basically, your entire goal at this point is to get reversal HP. Um, so Stone Edge. First one crits. At this point, I should super potion. And then the second stone edge would hit me into even better HP, but it double crit me and killed me. Um, which is just straight up unlucky that both of them hit and both of them crit. Um, yeah, which is stone edge. Is stone edge increased crit chance? Or am I it making... is, yeah. But, but I mean, it's, it's, still, like, it's still low like, odds. It's not. Yeah, it is also it. only like 85% accuracy, I think. Yeah. So yeah. It's either 85 or 90. I don't remember which. Um, yeah. That yeah. That's. I mean, the fact you've got to sell them back out, that does seem fairly quick, but obviously, it's not what you yeah. want to expect. It's not what you're hoping it, to see. It is still like 40 seconds down the drain, but at the same yeah. time, it's like in the moment, you're just like, right now, I have max revived. I just need to get it out and just continue. Because at yeah. that point, like, even if it. I'm not going to throw the run away and try again, just for the sake of getting a deathless. It's, I'll take it. I'll, I'll finish out the run. And. Had I missed 309, however, I probably would still be playing. Um, I probably would have tried to improve it, but um, I, I got the, the 309. I skipped 310, so yeah, I was That's, happy enough. And that that is still a, a massive achievement in itself. Yeah, um, it's it's one that I'm. I skipped 312, and like I went from 313 to 311 to 309, which is not something that you can say a lot at the the top level of PSR skipping yeah. minutes like multiple times it's it's quite rare it's like you don't enjoy even minutes yeah no not really but, they, um, they stick out quite early yeah but i guess at this point so what have you have you moved on to black white 2 or you mean uh i'm i'm taking a break from gen 5 um because i've got them all i'm i'm happy ish with all of them um yeah. And all my Gen 4 times suck. So I want to go and improve nearly all of them. The only one I'll probably leave is Diamond Any Percent, just because it's it's a pain to try and improve. It's literally just a luck based category. There's a yeah. bit like getting the full manip is just standard and you just have to hope you don't die. Um and as all as to the point now where you have to hope for good things as opposed to just things not going badly. So um, but I'm I'm Miserable focusing purely on Gen Four for a while, so yeah, fair enough. Well, yeah, so, thank you for taking the time to uh, pre-record this with me. You are most welcome. Thank you for having me once again for the podcast. Indeed, indeed. We'll we'll keep bringing you back. You keep getting world records. So <laughs> the condition, the condition for me to come back. <laughs> Indeed. So yeah, pass it back over to someone. <laughs> I don't know who's going to start talking. But yeah, in a moment. Transition. <laughs> all right, welcome back, everyone. Hope you all enjoyed uh, hearing from Skoa on his pretty awesome sub 310 run with the uh, Dust Cloud skips. Super cool stuff. Uh, switching gears here, we're going to just briefly go through our other noted runs for the month. First up, we have Zind or Sind uh, with a very solid second place time in Red Glitchless Classic. Uh, the time was 157.41. Uh, don't know too much about this. We don't have too much of a description here, but uh, I guess notes say no sylph bar. Um, that's obviously a good time save. Um, that could save time sort of mid game ish, but uh, didn't uh, didn't need it or use it here. Um, and he's only about 50 seconds or so off of uh, record by Xaran, which is one of the longest standing records in PSR, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I think it is. Either that one or the yellow. I always get mixed up which one it yeah. is. But, yeah. uh, 
also just being a relatively new runner to me as well. Like I, I know we talked about it in the last month, and I think I yeah. said the same thing. <laughs> but yeah, Sins hit the ground running with his Gen One career. Um, obviously, very good. Uh, still contending for record right now, I believe. And not, honestly, like with the activity that Red Classics going through right now and will go through, because we are going to have like a break the record type event for Red oh, Classics. Oh right, like, yeah. I can I can imagine that world record gets beaten um soon. So yeah, it's gonna yeah. be exciting to see what people do. I guess with that, the bounty as well. And the bounty, yeah. A lot of incentive to play. Yeah, I guess we'll go on to, on to the next run. Yeah, so this is uh this is Icy's any percent glitchless uh emulator record. Uh this is a uh, you can see there he made a bit of a mistake on <laughs> on that <this, laughs> Swiss cash there. Uh, but still a very solid time with a one fifty low one fifty eight would have been a one fifty seven with uh with a uh, without that uh, slight misplay, but uh still a very solid time. Um Icy's been on some really good pace uh, paces in uh on the emulator side of things here. Had has had one fifty seven before, so or been on one fifty seven pace, so it's only a matter of time. Yeah, yeah. literally day before I was watching and he he like got he got like Kyogre first try and was an E four, but he and, and like he had a one fifty seven basically for free, but yeah. he misclicked on Glacia and uh, he got hard punished with a sheer cold, and he lost that run. But luckily, it didn't take much longer for him to get like a really <laughs> huge PB. Just one day more. Um, I'm sure he wished that he, you know, <laughs> hadn't made either of these 157 costing mistakes. But yeah, that's so it is sometimes. Yeah, I mean, that other run that died to the wall ran, like, that was literally on par with, like, Gunners, Gunners and Shiru's runs, like, just, like a very solid 157 pace. Uh, yeah, that was pretty devastating. Yeah, let's put the leave empty handed, though. <laughs> yeah. I'm just looking at the gift in the bottom left, like, what? Yeah. <sighs> oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's was right. that when he lost a run? No, that's just Alwo doing a funny thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's not even him. He, oh, okay. <laughs> he likes to use interesting stream layouts sometimes. I like <laughs> Alwo's quote there on the bottom as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Icy cracks me up with his streams. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we'll move on to the DS side of things here, Tucker. Yeah, I can I can take it from here. Um, so I don't like think that was supposed to happen. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, these next two runs that are being showcased will have an optional, and I've highlighted the optionals for you. Thank you. But yeah, uh, we we've had a bit of a um, a bit of a boom in platinum finally. Um, uh, Rubentis here, he's got second place with um, a two thirty nine thirty six. Um, wasn't meant to hit this optional. Uh, happens, you know. Um, I I believe like I'm not sure. Maybe he, like had mid up and then like somewhere along the lines of broken like that. That's like normally supposed to be a path that you're okay to take with minute, but because oh, it broke, okay. it's not it's not safe anymore. But yeah, um, I can see how he hit that guy. But yeah, um, besides that, there's um. The other mistake, like the other big mistake here, was um, getting only third try ten to minute. Um, it's one of the most notoriously difficult things that uh, you do in any DSPSR game because, like, you have to tweak well while keeping minute, and like, it's an area where like it incurs a lot of lag because, like, on um, for some reason, like tweaking or, or moving on sand incurs a lot of lag so that also like affects how um the catch minute behaves when you 
netball tentacle or tentacruel. So yeah, that that took three tries to get there, which is honestly like there's not much you can do about that besides like you know doing everything perfectly, which is like pretty difficult. But yeah, um, apart from that, he had like probably one of the best runs from Tentacru Tentacruel to the end. Um, 239 is a pretty good time, and um, yeah, I, I think he's like not satisfied with his time here because like he knows the potential that you can get with this with this uh category. He he was on a like crazy run earlier today. I saw it was like two minutes ahead of his PP at Tentacruel, but um, he died to like one of the very next fights. Like I think Cyrus. So, yeah, I don't think he's going to stop until he gets world record. And with this run, like, Rubentis realized that world record is pretty feasible. Um, definitely enough room. He said that this run had two minutes and 20 seconds of mistakes. By Rubentis, by the way. So, yeah. yeah, which is crazy. So, like, this, like, a perfect run without mistakes of like with this rng could be like a low 237 which is just crazy like that's a whole minute Ain't even like broken yeah 236 yeah. yeah it's a lot of room and to think like this route is not even like the final route because like we we all know that there's going to be like a better route soon or not maybe not soon but like whenever somebody finally routes um teleport with golduck and tentacruel Whatever that will be, but you know, for now, this is like pretty close to what the final product will be. Teleport will save like 20 seconds, I'm guessing. So, even still, these times will be like almost, almost there. Yeah, it's crazy how fast this is now. Like, it is any percent, so you got the, the tweaks and stuff, but like. The fact that this is like almost down to like emerald emerald level times is really cool or like yeah. emerald glitchless um this was also another plant any percent run that we have um from alwo we got a 240 16 uh this is the optional that he hit um you're just like not supposed to go next to the ninja boy um when i'm trying to pick up this hyper potion but yeah, um, unlike Rubentis, Alo did hit uh, the mid up and tweak first try, so that's where he got like a lot of time save on him. But because he hit this optional and his major mistake was a literal wipe to the rival before um, the elite four, that just like kind of set him back too much. Um, this this was second place because he got this run before Rubentis, but uh, uh, yeah, it's not anymore. Um, two forty is also a really good time, but I was gonna keep playing as well. I remember like a month ago I was talking about it, like we we have like runners playing uh the world record net route now, so we can expect to see a lot better times, and now you're finally seeing it. Yeah. This might end up being the focus topic next month, potentially. Who knows? Yeah, I can definitely see that. And that's not all we have for Platinum. We have Dexy. Um, he recently acquired an English cart of Platinum, and he's doing a glitch list with Chimchar. Um, he got a 337.42, I think, just yesterday. Um, and one of the things that uh, kind of drove him to play this is just the fact that March made a ma made like improvements to the um, minute path that we were using. Um, so it's still the same seed, but um, a lot of the improvements just come from like around the margins. Um, I know you like catch the slaves a bit later, um, and it makes it better for uh, weakening purposes. Like you can just uh, Bidoof and Starly one time, and they're, like, 99% to catch, where before, like, uh, Starly was, like, 62% to catch after a hit. 
and BD if you had to hit twice. And um, other improvements that come from this meta change is uh, there's like less bad encounter frames when you um, meta Lucky Egg. So that's also good. Like sometimes you can skip an encounter there where you otherwise wouldn't be able to. And um, yeah, I mean, that's basically it. The, the new minute requires you to extend to Floroma because we sort of changed it where we buy um, like repels and healing. But um, extending to Floroma is something that we already did. So all you need to do is commit to runs that don't die to their or lose minute um before fashion case so nothing too too much different in that case um but yeah about about the run um 137 is a very solid time it's third place and uh yeah i i couldn't really find much that was wrong like i, I believe he got um a 110 3x lucky egg which is a really good time that's like on par with crafted's run uh which is world record and uh between then and there that and now um the run I, I guess it's just like a little slower i'm not sure what happened but um one of the big time losses i guess is on the cynthia fight itself where he got crit turn one by a spirit team so he had to take a a suicide death on Roserade so that he didn't die to Lucario. But that's really it. That lost like 15 seconds. Um, yeah, Dexy's like... I think Dexy's like probably the best player in DSPSR right now, so I would not be surprised if he got record in English. Fair enough. Yeah. It's... It didn't take long for him to get a good time. Yeah. I look at... I don't, um, even, I don't even remember if you played this game or not, but... No, I can talk I have, about it. I have, but Tucker can definitely take this one, yeah? Uh, yeah. Go ahead, okay. Then. Yeah. Um, so this is Irotaka's XY, second place JPN run. Um, a 357.37. Uh, I put the notes for myself that it's like a 347 in English timing. Um... Yeah, so for a lot of the run, he was just like behind his PB um, due to a slower Halucha catch um, at like about two minutes behind for most of his PB. That's just kind of how it is with XY. Like it sometimes takes forever to get Halucha. Like at the top level, you just like reset times that don't get Halucha within a certain time frame. But um, with a 347 English timing. Um, you can afford to wait a while, and um, I guess Itataka knew that he had a lot of time save in E4, so he kept the run going, and he ended up getting about a 30 second PB. So, so sh nice shout out to shout out to using the spreadsheet as well. A uh, spreadsheet. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like he uses um. Some kind of weird program here to track his IVs. I'm guessing this is Halucha. This is a really good Halucha. Wow. <laughs> I just noticed that. 29 attack and 28 speed. <laughs> Alright. Um, yeah, that's all I got for this run. Uh, we have Headbob's Alpha Sapphire round 2 record. Uh, 416.54. Um, yeah, it, it seems to be a like just an okay-ish run for a standard, um, but not many people have run round two, so it was fairly fairly simple for him to get record here. He hits an optional trainer here while doing backwards movement. Cool, uh, cool trainer brook, which is totally avoidable in Oras, but um, yeah, that's like ace trainer brook here. Oh my bad, base. <laughs> <laughs> they they did change the trainer class, yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, besides this, like, the run was like not 
insane, but it did get a 257 for the any percent portion. Obviously, that's like a little, um, it, it sounds a little worse, like compared to like straight up any percent because like you, you'd have to do a few detours in round two. So it's probably more comparable to like 256 and any percent, which is like pretty damn good. Um, just like doing an 80% run, that's like a 256, and then slapping on the round two portion, it's it's like not bad at all. Um, one of the main variant parts in round two is how many tries it takes for you to catch your Quaza, because you can't master ball it. You have to master ball the the legendary that you get, so Kyogre. Um, but he did get a second try Quaza catch, so overall the run's not. Not that bad at all. Yeah, and if I remember right, this is now within a minute of the Omega Ruby time. Um, the Omega Ruby record for round two, so closing the gap there as well. Yeah. Uh, both of them are 416, and Omega Ruby is 41 seconds last year. Okay. Yeah, so very comparable now. All right. And we have my run of Elf Sapphire, it's third place, uh, two fifty five eleven. Um, yeah, this run was pretty solid throughout. It's nothing crazy. Um, basically, I just had like good Kip section followed by like an, a decent enough Latia section that I was able to get through without dying. And that left the run on like two fifty four, two fifty five pace by the time I got to Kyogre. But then I got, like, a careful Kyogre minus special attack, so I, I just felt that hope, like, dissipate from me when I saw that. But, um, luckily enough, that Kyogre performed amazingly, so, like, I, I still managed to get a low 255, which is end up for third place, which was satisfactory for me. Like, it, that's I think... That's a trial. <laughs> yeah, that, that subtitle that I highlighted right there. <laughs> it, it can get really trolly because you just like don't have enough PP to bam this ball on it. Oh, that's what you switched. Okay, yeah. Yeah, just and it, or to fly. To yeah. fly, yeah. And it also has detect, so <laughs> I got detect twice on consecutive fly, fly hits. So yeah, love like, it when they detect when they could just kill you. Yeah, it, the AI is just <sighs> random AI, I guess. Really weird, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I was very happy with the, the Kyogre section after seeing that it was so bad. Um, it, it only like hit itself one time and it also like hit, um, hit it like all but one of the origin pulses that it needed to hit. Like basically with a bad Kyogre, like one of the plays that you can do is just like substitute a lot of surfs for origin pulse and it just works out and that's what happened like e even like when i was at glacia i was not like planning to use like so many origin pulses to get like faster fights but um like ekman ekman was in my chat when i was playing this and he was like why don't you just like origin pulse glaily instead of doing like the slower strat which loses like 30 seconds and i was like you know what that's like like such a good idea like i was it wasn't even crossing my mind that i could like origin pulse on glacia to get the same to get the normal flight um yeah that's I, I i really wanted third from a run like this and i really pushed hard to get it so it all worked out in the end well then again that thank you all right more 3DS runs to talk about. We have Amoeba's Moon Any% percent second place on new 3DS. It's a 451.16, which is one second behind world record. Um, he was about 30 seconds ahead of record before uh, like switching over to Lugnala as the main. And um, he saw that he had got a really, really bad Lunala. So, like, immediately he was just like, okay, I'm probably, like, not gonna record with this Lunala. Like, it's gonna lose that much time in E4. And, um, I think at, at the time of this run, Amiibo was, like, not ready to do one of the strats that you're, like, kind of 
forced to do, uh, which is mm. use Primarina for Acerola here. And he he even misplayed during this fight by encoring on Confuse Ray on Sableye. That forces Sableye to switch, and like he realized that immediately. So he has to like do this whole fight while being confused. But um, luckily it, it works out for him. He does not hit himself, and he's able to at least PB from this. Um, yeah, he he had like three confusion checks that he had to go through. It was quite terrifying. Yeah. And then just the fact that he thought it was hide world record until it was just turned out that he put the time wrong in live split. Yeah, that was for a good like 10 minutes, I think. Like we thought that he had tied world record. But um, when he checked SRC, we were all let down. Yeah. Like it, this wouldn't even be like the first time that uh moon record was tied between two people it used to be like between Wartab and um ringo it was so close to being tied again between head bob and amoeba so close yeah at least for now amoeba's still pushing it but i think they like next week or something that he's gonna go back to emerald so yeah i i think it's like about time that he that he said he was going to switch over to Emerald, so very un, very sad to see no record. But he definitely gave Ebob a run. Yeah. Gave him a challenge. Indeed. Alright, and uh, the last 3DS run that we have here to talk about is Itotaka's Sun run, any percent Sun, on new 3DS. Um, I don't know why he plays on Sun, because Moon is, like, safer and mostly better to play on. Um, the time is 5.23.27, which is about a 4.52.32 on English, so about, like, a minute slower. Um... But one of the main, main problems with Sun is that this Parasect here is really hard to deal with. Like, normally you're not one-shotting it ever. Um, it has dry skin, so like you can't use your water stabs to do anything. But he, if you can see here, his hidden power, um, he's tracking it right now. And it's a 50-50 between water, which does nothing, and fire, which kills it. And he just absolutely YOLOs it, and <laughs> it turns out to be fire. Um, so... That <laughs> wow. it was crazy. It was absolutely psychotic, but yeah, it just worked out for him. Um, shout out to Headbob for pointing that out to me. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known what happened in this run. Yeah, I just thought that was a funny moment. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you may as well go for it. Like, it's either gonna work or it's not. So, <laughs> I mean, it's. I think it was just dead if it was water. Sometimes so, yeah. you gotta be lucky to be good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Was there any more for that before I cut off the early? No, nah, no. Nah, that, that's all I okay. know about that run. <laughs> all right. Um. So I'll take over from here. Uh, we've got a few switch runs. Um. First one up. Uh. First of three. Let's go runs. We'll check out. Uh. This one is Etchy getting a nine second record in Let's Go Pikachu Any Percent NMS. Uh, with a 259.31. Um, you know, pretty standard pace for Echi. Echi gets, you know, a lot of these similar paces. Had a very, very good Starmie, um, from what I could see, and then kind of got a little bit trolled after the catching section. Uh, had a, a pretty bad Koga's, uh, Koga's gym, and then essentially YOLO'd his way through the end game to a, uh, a new record. Um, highlighted here is a pretty make or break it run, uh, point for a lot of runs, uh, which is Route 10, and you end up getting a very, very solid Route 10. Um, I think just looking over the splits, uh, his catch count was pretty much always a bit higher than his old PB, um, which his old PB was actually uh, achieved during one of the tournament races. So um, also another little interesting fact for you there. Um, 
but yeah, I think uh, Echi did keep playing for a couple weeks after this, um, but I think he's more or less done with this category for now. I know he has some aspirations to make it better than the EV record, um, but I think for now yeah. it'll stand just for a little bit. Um, second one here. Uh, this is Randall Eats Cheese with a 30056 in Let's Go Pikachu, getting third place. Um, definitely, oh, uh, the note we have is weird catch route, but mostly a clean run. Uh, just looking at the catch route, you can see a lot of bonuses, things like, um, Mankey and Sandshrew and Bulbasaur, and then missing a lot of those standard catches that you expect to see, uh, especially on a Pikachu run, like Growlithe um machop and cubone um so you know definitely a weird catch route um like it says but overall uh really solid run was able to improve um improve his time here i know uh he was on a bit of a an ev pb streak um so was able to you know, clutch it out and get a better time in pikachu which i know he does or i believe he thinks is the better game so Good to see. Um, and the last Let's Go run we have is uh, T-Pat, Thomas Patrick WX, and um, Kick and Run Keith getting the Let's Go Diploma record. So a little bit over a minute um, better than the previous record with a 444.16. Um, this is a... For anyone who's not seen this before, this is a two-player category um, where you... Uh, one person plays on Eevee, one person plays on Pikachu. Uh, you have to catch all the Pokemon between the two of you, trade, uh, so you both get a complete Pokedex, and then the game ends when you both end up with the Diploma. Um, so the trading is the important part. Uh, one of the downsides to this particular run uh, was they had a bit of trouble connecting to each other for the second trade, um, which was a bit unfortunate. It's just one of those things you have to deal with the internet. Um, so had a bit of trouble there, uh, but in terms of RNG during the run, uh, they had a lot of really good luck. Uh, highlighted here is a very quick pincer. Pincer is one of the few 1% catches you have to get, um, and it's probably the worst one in this category because the way that this run is structured is one player has to get all the way through to post game. The other player doesn't even have to get a third badge. I think you do get four badges, so you have access to Ultra Balls, but you don't have to. Um, so it's really a matter of like one person is blitzing through the game while the other person is catching a lot of those like rare spawns, the things you have to sit around in an area for a while to find. Um, and so Pinsir is a version exclusive for Eevee, which is the game that beats the game. So uh, getting a very quick Pinsir was was super nice. Um, and then the other pretty rare spawn they got was uh, in, in a quick manner was getting a Hitmonchan to spawn in Victory Road. Um, Hitmonchan is a special spawn. It's one of those spawns like Chansey that just has a really low chance of spawning. Um, and so the the standard way you get the Hitmons is you go and fight the uh, the fighting dojo in both games. One version gets Hitmonchan, one version gets Hitmonlee. Um, but finding one of them in the wild just allows the EV player to skip having to do that. So um, that was a nice, nice little bit as well. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, really cool to see. Um, kind of caps off, uh, these three runs in general kind of cap off a pretty busy few months for Let's Go. Um, I'm not sure we'll see a ton of Let's Go in the coming months just with the tournament ending and a lot of people moving on to other games. The, the summer of Let's Go is officially over now that it's <laughs> September. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, so two more uh, runs on the Switch, uh, both of them coming in Legends Arceus here. First one is uh, Kitamura getting a third place time in Legends Arceus Japanese with a 3.41.09. Uh, was able to PB by about three minutes, uh, getting to within a couple minutes of Halkyrie's world record. Um, judging by the splits, it uh, seems like a really, really good start. Um, and then kind of bled a bit of time through the Crimson Mirelands and Cobalt Coastlands compared to the old PB. Um, 
it was one of those things if they were able to sort of maintain the pace it looks like they may have been able to contend with the record but um unfortunately just how this game works sometimes uh bleeding a little bit of time through these you know trickier uh areas of the game just wasn't able to get the record but was able to improve their time uh, like i said by about three minutes And the final one is a very long run. This is Blood Dirk getting second place in the Shiny Charm category. Uh, so this is the category. It is not just catch them all. Catch them all is about uh, eight hours. This run you can see is about 15. And that is because to get the Shiny Charm, you have to not just catch every Pokemon, but get every Pokemon up to a level 10 research level. So it is quite a bit longer. Um, this was Blood Dirk's first run of the category. Uh, ended up about 23 minutes off of the other run uh, by Halkiri. So definitely had some luck um, involved with this run, but ultimately was held back a little bit just from this being their first run of the category. So uh, I'm sure if they decide to do more runs of it, uh, if they can fit into the schedule, just because it is so long, uh, if they decide to do more runs, uh, you should definitely see some improvements. Yeah. Yeah, that, and... that rounds out the leaderboard roundup, doesn't it? Yep. Uh, not yep, leaderboard roundup. The no runes. Um, I accidentally uh, got Ian to skip the uh, not the uh, the what's happened because I apparently oh, forgot right. what happened. So let's go tournament. That that's finished. Congrats to Etchy for winning that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I mean, Etchy, you organize it. Yeah. Anything about all this? Yeah, no, Any I was thoughts? just gonna say, um, it was a overall, I think, a really successful tournament. Um, like Jordan mentioned, uh Etchy got first place, Amber got second place. Uh in the finals match, Etchy got a 302, uh Amber got a 303, and then Headstrong came in third with a 306. Um, so it was a really, really fun time. Um and I think I don't know how often we plan to do them, but I, I do think that in general uh the switch psr community is is down for more tournaments so uh whether it's you know exclusively let's go or sort of dive into other games we're not entirely sure but um i think it was well received by people watching and and by people running so i think uh we'll definitely try to do it again sometime i believe a few people have asked for a ditch build one <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, and then also uh, PSR Marathon, that happened last weekend. A week ago today, it was, I I don't remember what room would have been at this time. Would it have been, it would have been a room. Um, but yeah, I'd say there was some, there were some technical issues as always when I'm involved with something, but <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think overall it seemed like it went, went quite well and it's PSR Marathon. We'll probably have another one next year. <laughs> Don't really know what else to say. I didn't organize it this this one this much. So, if I assume if Ranger was here, he'd have much more to say and much be much happier about how it went. I words. I don't know at this point. Let's go into the marathon runs, <laughs> <laughs> which um, up here we have. This is uh, UKSM at Insomnia seventy one. And this is Amoeba with any percent uh, glitchless in Emerald, which is part of the reason why he's going to Emerald, for a bit at least. Uh, this is on the 9th of September at just before 7pm. Uh, all these times are UK because of my computer and myself is. Um, Long Speedrun Summit 2023, Icarus with PMD Explorers of Sky B Darkrai. That is on the 23rd of September. Uh, just before 1 p.m., uh, 22 or uh, 22 1 in the afternoon. Uh, Marathon de Speedruns Colombia 2023. Uh, Diego Lazo R4 versus Juan, uh, Juan C. Lol. And uh, Diego Armando doing Rumble Co op All Stages No Passwords. That is on the 24th of September, just after 7 p.m. And then Last but not least, for what I could find, is uh, Oktoberfest 2023 German Marathon. 
Uh, quite a few runes actually. There's uh, Kailovich with Sapphire 80% glitchless on the 3rd of October at half 12 in the afternoon. Uh, Effects his ashes on the 4th of October with white 20% at, at 10 to 1 in the afternoon. Uh, Blood Dirk with Legends Arceus 80% at 9am on the 5th of October and then later that same day uh, Jim B with yellow 80% no save corruption TAS. Uh, at 25 to 4 afternoon and yeah I built I don't know if there's also a run that's currently going on right now uh, for GQ at PAX East I don't know if it's currently going on or if it's like just finished but uh, yeah that's uh, Alpha Sapphire I assume it's Alpha Sapphire because it's me uh, yeah. It. So, yeah now with that go to the leaderboard roundup so, it's always fair, anyone. If there are any times that you notice, feel free to shout them out. Like, for example, uh, Red Blue, 80% glitchless in English. Kink My Boot in 6th with a 145.46. I have no idea who that is, but they've got a very good yep. time. Is this like one of those? No, this is just. Oh, right, cool. So, it might be a case where it was like someone had an old username, but then it hadn't updated. Oh, that's a Quebec flag, not a Scotland flag. Yeah. Scotland's kind of back with this, well, yeah. Uh, Scotland's uh, across. And that's, oh, yeah. Okay. Like multiplication, so simple. Yeah. I shouldn't say across because the English flag is also across. As you can see with Crafton in 17. Yeah. They yeah. one forty six fifty two. Yeah. Uh, Anna Nan in 6th with 80% Glitches Classic, a 157.58. Araya in 9th with a 158.32. Truly in 9th for uh, Yellow 80% glitchless, a 155.15. Uh, I see in with the world record for the any percent English on emulator. We didn't mention that one because it's. Well, as I put it, it is technically slower than the 80% glitchless run from Icy. Yeah, um, yeah, he could submit his glitchless time to that if he really wanted to beat his own record. Yeah. yeah. That's a, a 158.24 there. Was there any Gen 2 runs? No. Never any Gen 2 uh, runs. Uh, Yakso with the Diamond Pearl 80% English emulator world record. A fifty-eight fourteen. Well done there. Uh, also, also a couple of good emerald times. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, the math genius with a two thirty-two fifty uh, th uh, two thirty-two thirty-five in eighth, and then in ninth bouncy with a two thirty-two forty-two. Uh, on DS as well that one. That one. I'm gonna assume at least with yeah. the comment. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't mention both of them. Ah, oh, Tucker, your fifth. In uh, black white yeah. 8 um, largely like a D roast run. Um, I I honestly see this run as like just worse than my previous PB. All I did was like do plasma skip, so it's like I get the time save from that. But um, yeah, there should be more to come. Undiscovered Bryson range. Oh yeah, because we do all the plasma skips, um, we have like less experience, um. So we, we like pretty much worked out like everything that's affected by that, but I did stumble upon one thing that we missed and it happened in the run. It's like a 13 and 16 range on Bryson's Vanillux and obviously I had to figure that out for myself. <laughs> um, I, I know in the future now to just use reversal if you can. <laughs> it's yeah. That was annoying to find out in the run, but it's all good. Uh, uh, third in Ultra Sun Ultra Moon on emulator in 9.15.43. I believe that is just the third time, but still, fair play to that. Wolf Gaming 22.03. Uh, let's go. Fair, fair chunk of runs. Iron, I see you've got like a, a couple in there. One for any percent, uh, no mouse on Pika, and then AOP on Pika as well. Yeah, the uh, the eighty percent one was I was pretty happy with. Uh, didn't 
kind of stuck around a 309 for a while, and then I got a PB in my last race of the tournament, but I didn't wasn't local recording, so I couldn't submit that. Um, and then I got a time that beat my leaderboard PB, but not the tournament PB, so I still wasn't satisfied. So that, that one was a 308 flat, I believe. And then I pulled out the 306, which is more than what I was um, happy with. I was looking for like a 307-ish time, so... I think any better than this, I'd have to really study the uh, the cycles and whatnot for the various spawns. Uh, that's something I don't really uh, haven't really focused on too much in terms of uh, practicing. So um, we'll see. Um, probably when the next tournament happens, if it happens, that's when I'll uh, come back to this. But happy enough for now. And then the AOP was uh, a race. It was like my first run, or that was my third run of the category. I've only done that in races, so uh, pretty fun run. Assuming everything spawns. Yeah. Uh, there is also truly in 14th with a 304.39. Headstrong and Fifth on uh, No Mouse Case on Eevee with a 301.10. Really good time. Uh, kind of surprising this fifth place, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, Furious in 20th with a 307.01. Uh, Sheep in 32nd with a 310.54. Which, seeing a 310 being 30 seconds, that seems a bit weird as well to me, but... Shows the, the increased quality of the runs now on those leaderboards. And there's also Furious in 6th with uh, AOP on EV, A52852. Uh, got a few Sword Children's there, uh, most notably in 8th for any percent with DLC on Sword in Japanese. Vera with a 4.15.36. You BDSP runs as well. Uh, Morgrim in 5th, or Gavin in 5th with a 3.39.14. And then in 4th, Spider C with a 3.43.21. And then also in 3rd, Moxie with um, a 4.29.14. Uh, that might be a case of it's the third run on the board, but still, fair play. I'm not saying all the categories because there's too many variables to say now. Mm. <laughs> uh, Lenz Arceus, a uh, few Japanese runners. Uh, well, yeah, there uh, was, um, I was going to say there, oh, was yeah. the, there was a Japanese race between, I think it was three runners um, at RTA in Japan. So Yes. And... Uh, I recognize at least like Kara was in the race. Um, I'm gonna guess Kitamura was as well. I don't remember who the third was though. I think. So if you remember last month, there was that really really long name that was just like. Oh right. I think that was Kitamura. Okay. <laughs> so, but like, we just. I remember that, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Kara and fourth. Uh, also, that that was restreamed in English on uh, PSR TV. I don't know if Halux uploaded the vault on his channel, or like, because I think MP said he local recorded it. Uh, so... It might be on Halux's channel, I don't know. Um, but yeah, then also in Sig Agpak with a 4.11.01, and then Fujia with a 4.19.24. Uh, two Scarlet Violet runes, second place for uh, Gonzi with 90% Japanese glitch list, a 5.32.05, which is just under 10 minutes behind the world record by Caro. So that must be quite a good run from Caro as well. Uh, do, do. Stadium, there was a world record on Switch Virtual Console, uh, Yozarian with a 130.53. That is apparently close to a 136 on console from using Hoon's comment from his previous world record. Uh, I don't know if they've done any more research into that to actually find a, pro a more accurate answer, but that's an approximation or a bit of context, I guess. Uh, UTCG runs Torre 9 in 29th with a 1 hour 17 second run in 90% glitchless. Uh, snap world record a 2102.767 by Akafuku 
uh, the Switch Virtual Console that I believe is also slower on that one. So I don't, I can't remember by how much though. Uh, gun lap in third for 100% on N64, 2333.9. Didn't notice that one. That's this, the thing with Snap. It's very close, but I don't know how much of a difference because it's like it's that short of a category, but it's like within four seconds of the world record. I don't know how difficult it is to get those four seconds. They're still very close. Still a very close run indeed. And then also 100% world record for Akapuku. Uh, 2460. The world in there as well. Uh, Pokemon Pinball Catch Jirachi, which is a miscellaneous category, but it's a world record. Bad Akko with a 347. Amoeba being dethroned. Oh, did you get dethroned last, uh, dethroned last month? I don't remember. But either way. Just may as well mention that because it's there. Um, PMD? There is only one PMD run, which is actually very surprising to me. But uh, fifth place for Sorichin with a 216.40. And then seventh, Kunai with a 217.28. Uh, in Rumble, Diego Lazor. Uh, in fifth on emulator, no passwords, a 44 44. Um, Poker Park Wii, there is one in there in 47th. Waz 00 with a 250 21 on any percent. The PAL rule set. And then last but not least, uh, classic any percent version 5.1 plus on Infinite Fusion. Uh, second place for Thorn 104 with a 146 50. There is no category extensions because there was issues with the leaderboard roundup. So they didn't get pulled in. Damn. Unlucky. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, I think part of it was down uh, to how the uh, for Stadium 2, how the variables were introduced for anyone um. that is curious. That may be part of it. There also is just a tra straight up chance I just close it too early. Like, I close the thing too early. That is also possible. I'm not going to rule that out. I am also a fool. But, uh, yeah, that brings us to the end of the leaderboard roundup and the end of the podcast. Um, Blue Magma, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. This is my yeah, thank first you. podcast. It was a lot of fun. So, yeah, thank you all very much. Yeah. Are you still going to be sticking with Ruby any percent or are you looking into any other runs? Or what, what, what's your plans? Um, I'll probably do some some more glitched runs here and there. Um, probably going back to glitchless for the time being. I do still want to dethrone wave in that eventually. Mm. Uh, but I will definitely be glitch hunting a lot. Um, Maybe on stream as well, so um, I'm definitely not done with glitched, but um, I'm definitely going to be taking some time to find some new strats, some new glitches and stuff. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, go follow Blue Magma, and also go follow Skoa if you're not already. Uh, thank you, like thank you once again to. I think Skoa might be streaming right now, or at least he was streaming earlier, like just before the podcast. Uh, yeah. So, that's nice. thank you once again to Skoa as well for doing that pre-recorded bit. Uh, etiquette. I'm trying to type this out at the same time, but my brain does not work doing multiple things at once. But etiquette, Ian, okay, thank you for joining once again. If that may follow. Absolutely. Um, the next podcast should be on the 7th. I don't see what would stop that as of yet, but uh, I don't think there's any anything happening on the 7th right now. So we'll say for now it will be on the 7th. And yeah, I hope hope you all have a good rest of your day, evening, wherever you are. Stay safe, take care. There is anything else that I forgot, right? I can't think yeah. of anything. All right, cool. So yeah. One run, on the, one run on the leaderboard that hasn't been submitted yet was... Um, Sapphire glitchless by Bouncy. That was a 202, which yeah hasn't been 
verified yet, but that is a that's his first run ever, which is oh wow, that out because that is a very good time. That is a very good time, yeah. Well done, Bouncy. It was like they took a break for a bit and then they've come back. So the crazy of the, the break that they took was uh, was great for them. Yeah. But yeah, outside of that, in that case, I hope everyone has a good rest of the day or evening wherever they are. Stay safe and take care. Goodbye. <laughs>